Yeah, that got me. <laughs> I've been good all, all morning until then. I guess like uh, Kim said, hi, Ms. Giles. Sorry, that's, that's our principal at my school. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm totally random now. Um, the story behind that is pretty amazing, and, and I've talked to a few of you here today about how God has been working through everything. It's weird because all of us can t- attest that that hindsight is twenty twenty kind of thing where you can look back, oh, that's what God was doing. This is why this happened or this didn't happen at that specific time. What's weird, um, and maybe weird is the wrong word, but what's interesting is we, I noticed this stuff when it was happening, all the things that were going on. I had this conversation with Major uh, when we were sitting at hospice. I, um, in the story about the recording... Um, dad was going through her stuff and went into this drawer and found this shoe box and opened the shoe box that had been sitting there for whoever, however long, long time, opened this box and these two audio tapes happened to be sitting in this box. So one of them is, is dad, dad had recorded some stuff, but the other one, uh, read Chris and Pat, and then the rest was Pat singing a God thing. First of all, this tape has been sitting in that box forever, and, and we didn't know that. Even Dad had mentioned he wished he would have found that before uh, January 20th so we could share it with Mom, um, you know, with her. But when we found, found the tape, this is, this is cheesy to say, but the fact that I still had a pickup truck that had a tape player in it <laughs> at the time, <laughs> to have this audio cassette... And there was no way for us to listen to that because I don't have a tape player anymore. Um, So the first thing I did was we went out to the truck, we sat, and we bawled our eyes out as we listened. So first, the first part of it is me, when I was like three or four years old, old singing uh, Santa Claus comes to town, but I say quaz instead of claws. But then, then the rest of it is my mom singing these songs. And dad couldn't even reference when she was doing it. We used to have one of those little black uh, uh, tape players that you push the, the, t- the blue and the red button, I think it was, right? And I think she just decided, uh, maybe just for, just for recreational purposes, I'm going I'm to record myself singing. And so we have 10 or 12 songs, short songs. I mean, obviously, that was like 20, 30 seconds of her singing these songs. And we were just blown away, blown away. Hopefully you can hear, she was a very good singer in her day when she really um, was, was doing that. And um, it was so touching, and we picked two of those songs that I really felt fit the occasion, obviously. Um, but it was a God thing. God thing right at that moment that things were happening. Um, it was a God thing uh, that the Johnsons were in Florida, right? That you guys were around. Um, the fact that they could be a part of them, they were such an important part of our lives. Um, and having the cannings as well, which have always been a very important part to our, our family's lives. And, and just the fact that we were all in the area at the same time, uh, still living our lives, I, it was just really interesting. So to be able to share that with you is obviously very personal for our family. But uh, it, was, it, was, it was amazing. God is working. And... Um, it, it's, it's just plainly obvious. I could, I could tell you many other examples of, of the case of that. Now, Kim has just hit a couple of things that I want to talk to you. Kim was better than I did. She was better because she wrote down a lot of the things she wanted to say. And I tried, um, but the more I thought about it, I was like, man, I, 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 there's just so much. So I kind of wanted to just talk a little bit off, off the top of my head a little bit. First of all, one of the things, I don't know how many people are able to watch the slideshow ahead of time. But man, my mom had the hairstyle game going on. <laughs> and may, maybe I realize that because I don't. <laughs> um, maybe, it's, maybe it's a little bit of a jealousy thing. I don't know. Not that I would, I don't know. Afros didn't work. I don't think that would work for me. Although we have stories about afros, don't we? Um, so that, that was one thing. Um, the other thing I wanted, I noticed completely in, in watching uh, in going through the pictures that we went through and putting them in the slideshow is that there was a lot of smiling, a lot of laughter. 
We joke in our family, and obviously mom's, mom is, was a major part of that. Everywhere we go, we're like the loudest family. Sorry. <laughs> we, we, go, we've, we, we talk about going to see a movie, and we're like the loudest people in the movie theater laughing our butts off. And like everybody else is like not laughing, and we're like, are we weird? I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I guess we are. Um, but, but my mom was right in the middle of that. Um, so I, I think of that, and I'll, and I'll reference that in a second. One of the other things Kim kind of mentioned about her, her, uh, her game, um, I don't know, virtuosity? I don't know if that's the right word. She was, like, amazing at games. Um, it was the most satisfying and happy day for me that I finally beat her in Scrabble, and it took so many years for that to happen. I promise. Uh, sorry, Jennifer. But the reality is she probably was the best Jeopardy player that I know. <laughs> and those of you that don't know, Jennifer just recently was on Jeopardy. That's why I say that. So she'll be signing autographs after. Um, it, it burns me that she was the first one to graduate college. But I'm so proud of my mom. She beat Kim. She beat me. Um, she, you know, just the fact that she was, uh, had that, that determination in her life to go back and, and complete something that she had wanted to do for so long um, says a lot about her character. Um, again, you mentioned it a little bit. It's something I really thought about a lot in this past couple weeks is um, she did a lot of jobs. <laughs> we found her resume, didn't we? And there's a lot on there. Uh, you heard a lot about that today. But the thing that I always point back to is it, pretty much every single one was about helping other people. And I look at us, our family, and the things we do and the things that we aspire to do, and that's exactly what our whole family is. So what I, I only say that to say this. For for. Our family, I think that's going to be part of her legacy. That's what she's passed down, is the, the, uh, whether it's teaching kids or being a probation officer or whatever the case may be, um, we are always uh, about helping people because that's what mom did and that's what mom wanted in her life. Um, and I, I think that's an important legacy that uh, we will never forget. Now, I go back to the whole laughter thing because of this. Um, we laughed a lot together. And even in the times that we've been remembering in the past almost a month, it's been almost a month, uh, we laugh a lot still in the stories that we think about. Um, some of you may not know that she was, she was diagnosed with depression. My mom had depression. And there were many times it was difficult. Sometimes it was difficult to convince her, Mom... You got it going on. I mean, you're making, you, you've spread happiness and light to this world. It was hard for her to hear, hear that sometimes. Mom, if you can hear me, listen to what we're saying, because the evidence is here. The light has been spread from you. Not, not the ne negativity, the positivity. The love of the Lord, the love you had for your Savior, that is what's evident. And you need to know that wherever you are right now. These last three years have been very, very hard. And Dad's taken the brunt of that, taking care of Mom. And I... I, I don't mean to offend or, or make light of the references that, that these words are for, but what I keep going back to is she's free at last. Thank God Almighty, she's free at last. As hard as that was, we know now that she's in a better place. She's probably jumping up and down, singing her heart out, doing all the things that she wished she could have done for the last three years. And um, we're so happy uh, to know and have that, that inner peace and that satisfaction to know that she's with the Lord. And um, there's no question about that whatsoever. 
So in echoing my sister's words, we, we do thank each of you for, for being here and for your support. Each of you that came and saw us or sent a message or whatever, um, it, very, it was very um, comforting to our family, and we do appreciate that. Mom, I love you. I said it every day I left the hospital, every day that I saw you, and I'll say it every day until I see you again. So again, my mom's going to sing for you. Um, it's uh, some of the words from Psalm 23. Thank you. For he is close beside me, guarding, guiding all the way. He spreads a feast before me in the presence of 